Today we're going to take the frame that we built in a previous video for the Smart Compact Bench and the top and the bottom that we milled in the last video and we're going to put them together and complete the top of the Smart Compact Bench. I'm Ron Polk and this is the Smart Woodshop. If you want to get a set of plans, detailed plans, to build your own Smart Woodshop or one of my workbenches, you can click on the link in the description of this video down below. The frame for the uh, Smart Compact Bench is incredibly light. Now it's going to vary with the plywood you use, but so much of it is cut away that you can see that it just feels like it weighs just a pound or two. But I wanted to find out for sure, so I brought my luggage scale, which is around here somewhere, and I weighed it, and I was absolutely amazed to find out it was 9.3 pounds. I, I would have never guessed it was that heavy, but even at 9.3 pounds, it feels like nothing. After I get this assembled, we'll weigh the top with the luggage scale and find out exactly what it weighs. When I assemble this, notice that I'm not going to use a square. I'm not going to use any kind of tape measure. Everything is going to line up perfectly because everything has been laid out. The screw holes are already in, at least the pilot holes. I'll use a drill bit to go through those to cut the holes in the mating piece so that I won't get any split out. Uh, we'll use a drill bit to drive in the screws. We're going to use uh, inch and five eighths. I said they were inch and a half in a previous video. These are inch and five eighths trim head screws. And we're going to use a couple of blocks to space these centers from the side so, so when I line up the side it's going to perfectly line up the centers and a couple of clamps. I'm not even going to have to think about this when I'm assembling. I'm just going to apply glue and paint by the numbers. So let's get started. To start I'm going to clamp the spacers in place. You can see why I drilled the holes. I didn't need those holes for assembling the frame but here they're necessary to get the clamps installed and have them below the surface so they don't interfere. I'm not stingy with the wood glue. I put on lots and lots of wood glue. I want it to squeeze out. I don't mind having to wipe it up. I want it for the strength and stability that it provides the bench. I've got the bench flipped upside down to I'm gonna install the bottom first. There's no front, back, right, left, top or bottom on the frame. It doesn't really matter uh, which way it's put on. So the bottom goes on. I start by pinning the four corners. Uh, again, the top is exactly the length, width, and it's square. So I pin those corners and that gets the, the frame mostly squared up. And then it's a matter of just pulling the frame in to the edge. Pay attention to where the spreaders are because those are stiffer there. You can't move them around as much. So I pull those in alignment. So there's just sort of a process of just going around and pulling everything in alignment with the bottom, which is going to line everything up no second thoughts no thinking about it just uh, drill the holes and i'm using my finger to feel that it's the frame and the bottom are flush and not even really looking just you you can get even closer with touch than you can with, by eye i used a chisel to sort of scrape it's it is a lot easier to get in the corners and clean up the glue so a chisel and a rag wiping it off and i flipped it over repeat the process here i put after put the clamps in um, put in, put on lots of glue, and then um, in this case, I started to clamp it down the way I did before, and I just decided I could just hold it in place and save a little time. So pre-drill the through the pilot hole and pin those corners in again, just like I did on the bottom. When I got to this corner, I needed to knock it in a little bit. I don't know if the glue was starting to hold it a little bit or just things kind of getting locked in place. So I used to clamp. Uh, Stuck it in one of the bench dog holes and against the frame and I was able to just move it. It wasn't very much. It hardly could see it with the eye, but I could feel it with my finger. So I was able to push that over and get it perfectly aligned. And of course, once I lined up one corner, it made the other one uh, absolutely perfect. When I got around uh, right where the spreader intersects with the side, I could just feel it with my finger again. It was uh, hardly visible, but I couldn't push it over and get it... Uh, perfectly flush so I grabbed a bar clamp and was able to squeeze it right over. I discovered a problem that I won't be able to resolve on my smart cross cut but I'll rectify it on the plans. The center two spreaders on the smart total station those uh, are the you know where the miter saw fits in so I don't want to push them toward the center I want to push them more uh, to the outside, widen that middle section a little bit. Not much, a few millimeters, just because the, the uh, spreaders are 
right at the edge of the bench dog holes and I want to make sure there's more space for that. Smart Compact Bench is now assembled. Let's see how much it weighs. 49 pounds, that's not bad. That's pretty easy to flip around and throw up on the sawhorses. In the next video, I'm going to take the poor man CNC and this template left over from the Smart Total Station and I'm going to make the sawhorses. But I am going to make a modification to it that I can abandon if it doesn't work. So we'll see how that turns out. If you like these videos, if you learned anything, if you'd like to see me make more, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And remember to ring that bell when you subscribe so you will know when I put up a new video. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Woodshop. Stay safe and have a great day.